Hello everyone, this is Miguel Borba, designer of Made the, Golf, Made the Cut Golf Remastered Edition. Just wanted to show you how the game is played through a series of videos. Um, we're going to go over one of the main components of how to play the game, which is using Google Earth. So what you would do is go to earth.google.com. And you uh, should get a picture like this. In the game, you will get a project that you'll then be able to play a course. You could always play any course in the world anywhere you want. You just have to use a search function. Search for Pebble Beach. Golf links. And it will take you to the course. Once on the course, you would have to have an idea of where the starting hole is, which happens to be hole number one is here. But there's also maps of the different layouts of the course so that you can uh, play the hole, hole number one, and then hole number two, etc. The projects that I will be releasing include T-Box, the T, and a general layout of the whole direction so that you can play 18 holes of a given course or 18 holes in the world and you bounce around from, you know, from, from location to location. Um, so anyway, let me just show you some of the house things that you need to do on Google Earth first has to be not Google Earth Pro it has to be the standard Google Earth that you get on a, a web page like this the earth.google.com the pro has some advanced features in it but it also has some limitations in it that I find doesn't work too well with being able to play made to cut golf remastered on on the screen it's a lot easier to play uh, using the, the standard earth.google.com so the first order of business is to look at these three lines which is the menu click on that so that you can go to the settings click on the settings and what you're going to do is you want to make sure that the unit of measurement is in the units of feet and miles versus meters and kilometers. Because the game is designed in the United States, we use feet and miles, or I use feet and miles for all the game uh, components. You're welcome to do the translation to meters and, and kilometers, but for now, make sure. I think the default for Google Earth is, is in meters and kilometers so make sure you switch that to feet and miles and then hit save and then the other features about this is the how do you use the measurement tool it's over here in the bottom left if you click on it wherever you click to start it'll give you in yards how far you will be attempting to hit the ball, the golf ball. So for example, a pro might hit it 290 yards total. So he's usually landing around 260 to 270. So in this case, if he was to take a shot at the 260 mark, it would be here, right along the edge of the tree line. And um, you could also come to the fatter part of the fairway and take a lesser club, let's say a 220 yard shot, 221. And then what he would have left over to go to the green would be 222. Subtract, because it keeps adding. I could, I could start again here, which is something I can do. So if you cancel that, now I know I'm over here. And you can measure out 
how roughly how far it is to the green from that location, 154 yards to the center of the green, if he chose to take it uh, 220 something yard shot. So that's how the measurement tool works. And let me X out of that. Another feature of Google Earth that is used in the game is the compass direction, which is always faced, not always, but if you click on this, it always faces you in a north, south, east, west configuration. And that's important because that's if you're going to play with wind, the wind plays off the north, south direction uh, compass wheel. So um, when you're playing a game, let's say the, the wind is headed from the south to the north direction, it would be going from these these houses here across the fairway so as you're taking a tee shot and your second shot in it's going to be a more of a of a crosswind in these type of shots on this hole if the wind is going in the northerly direction and uh, let's give an example of a shot situation so you would let's say you have a 230 yard landing area that you want to take or 220 like we talked about before and this is the tee box that you shot from 220s here so you would just click there and then you would do your rolls on your golf card to see what kind of right and left scatter you get and then how far back or forward your ball lands after scattering so let's say it scatters to the right 10 yards if you're at 220 that'd be 230 right and you have to come perpendicular to the line let's say that's 230 i clicked a little earlier 230 and then let's say the ball was not hit very well and it was 10 yards short that means you want to come back to 240 And that's where the ball lands. And let's say the ball rolls 20 yards. So you want to go up to 260. From 240, 250, 260. And that would be an example of where your ball landed. Once you click on forming the line and you finish it, there's a start new to make a new line. But since we just took the shot and we want to make sure we mark it, that location, on this line this little location so what i do is over here on the bottom there's a add place mark keep an eye on the location when you click this this line goes away it's as simple as keeping an eye and knowing that it was right there and now i just hit save and now i have the location you could arrow back out of there you have a location of where your ball landed, so now you can plan your second shot. Again, you go to the distance. You'll see that you are 154 yards from the green center. And let's say the flag was here, which looks like a shadow of a flag. You would be 147 to the hole. You could aim right at it and then roll your dice to see how much it scatters if at all, and how much it goes rolling forward and backwards. So that's how Google Earth is used. So let's say the shot went there. And of course, now I put another location mark on that spot. And let's say the, the, the hole was right in the middle of the green. Then what you would do is measure from that location to the center of the green right now it's in yards but you could change it up here to feet to know that you have a 23 foot putt and on the golf card you roll into the 20 23 foot putt area to see if you make the putt for birdie and that's how google earth is used to play it's very, very simple. I'll show you an example of some shots that I've taken. If you look at uh, 
I have created a Golf's Ultimate 18 and then a Best 18 Holes in the World. So the Best 18 Holes is all over the world. Golf's, Golf's Ultimate 18 is the 18 holes in the United States or generally North America. And um, let's go there. Let's go to the Cherry Hills Country Club, which is hole number one. This is a hole that uh, one of uh, Arnold Palmer's pick from the book, the Golf's Ultimate 18. This is his pick. So you can see here that uh, the whole tee box is down here. I'll, I'll mark a line. Let me close this up. Let's form a line here. I'll start a line. So the shot to come from here, and this red was my target for this particular hole. Oops. Let me uh, go. Hold on a second. Let me cancel the line. So anyway, the, the shots come in and I put my target here at 261 landing spot. And all these are 10 drives I, I've taken with the same golfer to show you the scatter of the particular shot. Most of the balls found the fairway. One found this creek. One on the edge on the first cut here. And a couple to the left into the rough on this hole and then i took all 10 of these shots into the green and you could see the scatter from roughly let's show you roughly let's call it it's back in feet let's go back to yards roughly about 100 between 75 and 125 yards shot so pretty close shot, and you can see the scatter of the shots coming in. A couple of wayward shots over here in the rough. A couple of shots in the rough there, but half of the shots, maybe 50% of the shots hit the green in regulation or, or the green. And then you can see from here, there was a birdie on this particular golf shot. This golf shot resulted in a par, two putts. A birdie putt was made from there. This one was a par. This one's even though these were close, the, the putts were missed. A couple of uh, shots out of the rough that were up and downs for par. Here's a failed up and down. Didn't get close enough for and got a bogey. And then again, all three of these down here with a lot of green to work with, all resulted in bogeys for for this particular shot. Um, hole number two is here. And you can see the tee shot is along this yellow line. And it was targeted to land at this 267 marker. And here's a scatter of those tee shots. Most balls landed on the fairway, one in the rough and one in the first cut. And then I took those shots in. This is a longer shot in. So now you're talking about roughly, let's go to the center of the green. Roughly between 180 and 230 yards, most of them in the 190 to 210 range. Those shots came in, and you can see the scatter on those shots to the green. Now, to avoid, the flag was here. You can see this dark spot. That's the hole, that's the flag. And you can see that the position of that hole with the bunker here, when you're shooting, in that 180 to 210 range, your ball is going to roll. So it's, it's, it's going to want to land in this bunker to be able to roll to the hole for a perfect shot. So a lot of these shots went over the green, trying to be aggressive and attacking that bunker. And then I played a little bit more conservative with some of the shots and aimed, aimed more to the left and landed the ball in this uh, fairway area and they would roll up onto the green so these are these shots so it just gives you an idea of the scattering that's potential so you can the game offers so much and it, it's real golf how much you want to be a play aggressive and not uh, one thing i forgot to mention is the elevation so let me show you for example on this shot if you look here 
if I start my shot from here, if you come down here on the bottom right, it says 5,378 feet. That's the surface from the uh, above sea level. So in this particular position, if you look at the number, it's 65 feet, 5365. And to the center of the green, it's 5403. So it's 5365. So it's up the hill to 5403 of around 50 yards or so, 50 feet, sorry, 50 feet, which if you're playing with the elevation rules means a 25 yards increase in the distance to try to get the ball up to that green. So that's how elevation's played. So anyways, I just wanted to give a quick update on how the Google Earth uh, component of the game works. And I'll uh, be sending out more content as far as uh, going over the rules in future videos. Thank you very much.